Hello everyone, I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Hurd. We have an early look at some potential spring flooding coming up this year and it's interesting we were kind of in the same boat last year at this time with a very healthy snowpack but if you recall last year it melted out rapidly late March early April and we never did see a normal spring rainy season last year in May and June and that all led to a flash drought and a terrible fire season across the state of Montana. This is not a guarantee but I am piecing some of the uh, puzzles pieces together and we're coming up with a little bit of a picture here that could lead to some potential flooding this spring especially west of the continental divide very typical La Nina winter weather pattern lots of moisture coming in off the Pacific a lot of cold air from the polar jet that's all been colliding across Montana nicely and we've seen week after week after week this winter season lots of storm energy passing through Montana big impacts on travel and a lot of snow in the high country and in fact the water content in that snowpack the SWE the snow water equivalent percent of normal values are in that 125 to 165 percent of average so we're running slightly to above to well above average for this time of the year and these areas in darker blue like the upper Clark Fork and the upper Yellowstone these are the areas I've got my eye on for potential flooding. So the National Weather Service uh, came out with an early estimate on flood risk and it mainly centers on areas west of the Continental Divide. So as we look at some snow tail data, uh, picking out one snow tail site and that's the Basin Creek snow tail and that's up there in the Highland Mountain Range. This green line is your 30 year mean average and it basically shows how it builds in October peaks in early May and then melts out by early July. Now the red line here is the historic low snowpack and that's well below normal as you can see. The blue line is the historic maximum and again it peaks again sometime in late May and early July. That's the historic and don't quote me on this but I believe that was the 96-97 winter season. This black line is this year and you can see we've been way up there very close to the seasonal max and we've reached it and tied it in the first of March in that uh, Basin Creek snow tail site so if that trend continues and continues to climb then wow we're looking at some incredible runoff coming up this spring but that's a big if uh, but you can see what I like to see about this graphic is that by the first of March through uh, roughly about the first of June you can see how this just there's a sharp increase on the water content in that snowpack and that's your spring storms that have a lot of water potential in rain and rain mixing with snow in a typical spring season all right now as you move over to anaconda barker lakes not right there at the foothills of uh, mount hagen you can see here too this black line has now exceeded the seasonal maximum for the first of March and if that trend continues to follow this blue line well that could be a troublesome area and as you move over to the Deer Lodge area Cottonwood Creek is another one we're watching very closely again up there in the Rocker Peak area still tell site we've gone way above that seasonal maximum and it's continuing to climb out there in the upper Clark Fork region. So as you look at other snow tail sites, the Pioneer Range, Wise River, uh, Upper Yellowstone, or excuse me, Upper Big Hole, uh, again it's not over exceeding its maximum of record but it's very close to the maximum of record but well above normal. And as we step over the divide towards Big Sky, again this black line shows you we're above normal but not quite exceeding the record of maximum but it's very healthy and as you move over to the Bridger Range for example near Belgrade uh, you can see it's very close to its seasonal maximum but just a hair below but still a lot of water content is expected there and again it's holding roughly at about oh, 28 inches of water content and as you see there are some exceptions down in the Centennial Range uh, down along the Montana Idaho State Line near Lima it's a little on the low side and very close to the historical low uh, snowpack on uh, water content there so that's a bit of a concern so something we're keeping a very close mm -hmm. eye on the potential for flooding for some areas and not so much for others and you got to also keep in mind that we're typically would see the wettest months of the year are April May and June for Butte 
and we can ramp up between about one to two and a half inches during that 90-day period. For Bozeman, it could be even more dramatic, especially April, May, and June. Two and a half to three and a half inches of rain is a possibility. If that does happen, coinciding with the spring runoff, well, then that's where there could be some minor flood issues. So as we look at the continuation of the 90-day forecast March through May, we're still expecting colder than normal temperatures and above normal precipitation or just slightly above normal across the state of Montana. Now we have a La Nina that is weakening right now and it will reach a neutral state. But these are the areas I've got the greatest concerns and it's mainly west of the continental divide. Blacktail Creek, Mill Creek, Warm Springs Creek and Anaconda, out towards Lost Trail Creek there near Anaconda, then Cottonwood and Peterson Creeks as they move through Deer Lodge, and again Blacktail Creek as it moves through Butte. These smaller streams and creeks can really overflow their banks, and if you're in a flood prone area, you need to be thinking ahead at this point because flood insurance takes up to 30 days before it can kick in. So that's an early estimate on where I expect to see some troubles and where I don't expect to see others, but we're, we're getting a pretty good picture on the, how things are shaping up for this winter, but it'll be interesting to see when that mountain snowpack melts out, and that's a big question mark, and that'll be a big, uh, well, a determination on the lack of flooding or how worse the flooding could be. And again, something we'll keep an eye on. We'll update this in greater detail as we uh, look at this on a weekly and a monthly basis heading into the next 90 days.